how would you improve golf? Chris, tell me what you like about golf, what you hate about golf, and what you're going to do to make it better. So I am personally not actually a big golfer. I, I do enjoy going to the like the driving range and just hitting a few balls, but I don't really play like a f- real game of golf. And I think that applies to all three of us, right? Yeah, it's very true. <laughs> <laughs> We're experts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but I do find that I have a lot more fun doing mini golf. So I wanted to be like, how, can we make our game of golf more like mini golf? Can we make like a giant mini golf? So golf. <laughs> so I, I doesn't large mini golf just so like we're playing we golf and... and that's it. <laughs> yep, the end. So I basically wanted to just like scale up what mini golf is onto the scale of what normal golf is. So like the average length of a mini golf hole is forty five feet, around forty five feet, and the average length of a normal golf hole is around 1200 feet so it's like 27 times bigger so it's like okay we're scaling the the course up 27 times that means we need to scale up the hole 27 times and we need to scale up the ball 27 times because i wanted i'm going for like a honey i shrunk the kids sort of thing so like everything's giant makes sense so even though it is a full golf it is is now a golf course but it's still a themed mini golf course yeah the theme is big yeah so it's like the same course as a normal golf course but everything is big so after you scale it up the hole so a standard hole is around four and a quarter inches in diameter and it's four inches deep so if you scale that up that's nine and a half feet in diameter and nine feet deep it's a big old hole and then the ball so a regulation ball golf ball has a minimum diameter of 1.68 inches And there actually is no maximum. So technically, our giant ball is regulation. (laughs) Huh. Huh. Yeah. And our giant golf ball scaled up is 3.78 feet in diameter. And it'll weigh 28,000 or 2,800 pounds. I'm I'm glad you corrected that because 28,000 pounds was clearly, clearly too large. 2,800 is a little more reasonable. Yeah. And to give us context for that weight. 2,800 pounds is about half the weight of a blue, a blue whale's tongue. That gives me no That's context. That's not context. <laughs> That's not how that works. <laughs> I can't, you... Context is supposed to be something I can imagine. Yeah. And not even just the tongue. It's half a tongue. I don't it's know what that... It's half of the tongue. So what you just that... imagine a whale's tongue and you cut it in half. It's pretty simple. I can't <laughs> do that. I don't... <laughs> to give you a more normal context for that weight, it is three quarters the weight of an average car. Okay. See, that I can handle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a, an average car is like around 4,000 pounds. Wait, so a, cow, a whale's tongue is bigger than my car. Yeah, this is also kind of mind-boggling <laughs> anyway. Yeah. That's unfortunate news. <laughs> <laughs> so if we have this giant ball in this giant hole, obviously we need giant obstacles because obstacles are a big part, part of mini golf. So I was looking at obstacles. I wanted to try to figure out which ones I want to use in the classic one is obviously the windmill. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to try to make a giant windmill just in the middle of my course. And I found a windmill, like a mini golf windmill that you can buy and put in your own mini golf course just to see like what size it is. And it's six feet tall. So six feet tall scaled up in our scale is 162 feet tall. That's a big mini golf windmill. It is a big mini golf window. I wanted to see what the size of like real windmills are. So a widely used GE model for a wind turbine is 328 feet tall. But that's like an industrial type turbine. That's not really the type that we want. Yeah, that's a wind turbine, not a windmill. Yeah, it's a wind turbine. <laughs> it's on like a giant pole. So obviously it's, it's really tall. So I, I looked at older style windmills and in the Netherlands, there's this village that has like the most densely populated windmill area, I guess. I don't know what you call it. (laughs) I don't know that. I didn't know you could define areas by wind, like their windmills. Yeah. Windmill per capita. The, the village is called Kinderdijk. Kinderdijk. Okay. There are 19 windmills in this village and they were built in 1740. Uh, They were built to like drain excess water from the surrounding area. And they're still there today. But they don't really, so they have like better pumps to do that now, but some of them still contribute to that draining, but most of them are just like there because they, they're they like historic. They're actually 
now they're UNESCO World Heritage Sites. So, But this is like the style we're looking for, the style of windmill. And in this village, it's actually not the tallest of this type of windmill. The tallest is in Skydem. <laughs> Skydem? Yeah. Skydem. I can't see the words that you're trying to pronounce. I can't see the letters you're trying to pronounce, so I can't help you. Skydem. I'm going to go with Skydem. And the windmill itself is called Denord, and it is 109 feet tall. So it's a little shorter than we actually want, but it's probably good enough. It doesn't have the hole in the middle, so we'll need to make it the hole. We'll just drill a hole through the middle, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> or you could build your, you know, plan it ahead of time when you decide to build your 160-foot No, we need to get windmill. an existing windmill. <laughs> move it over, and then drill a hole. Yeah, that seems cheaper. Yeah, yeah. it's more efficient, really. <laughs> I also need to extend the sails because the sails don't really go that low. They're not designed to go to the ground, but we need them to block the hole. So we'll need to modify this windmill a little bit, but it'll work. Can I propose just building one from scratch? I don't know, just, just for just for no. efficiency's sake? <laughs> no. <laughs> that seems that seems like, like way too little work, Marcus. Yeah, you're crazy. Okay, it's wasteful, not environmentally friendly. Yeah, you re- recycle your windmills. Mm-hmm. So that was, that's our windmill. Obviously, we're going to do this for other obstacles, too. And you can basically do this just for, like, you can get any obstacle you want. Just grab a large landmark or a building or whatever and put it in the middle of your course. <laughs> just, just, drill yeah, a hole just, through just it. Yeah, just steal the Washington Monument if you need those, those pillars from that one course. Yeah, and drill a hole through it. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're good. That's your obstacle. But the one other classic mini golf obstacle I was looking at was the loop. Because a lot of mini golf courses have a loop in them. That's like a, a mainstay of mini golf. The loop is the most bullshit of all mini golf obstacles. <laughs> I will maintain this until the day I die. Why do you have do you have a beef with the loop? The, here's the issue with here's the issue with the loop. The loop is like a success or fail system where you have your stroke and your stroke either one gets you through the loop and it's fine you did it, or your shot doesn't get you through the loop in which case you have made no progress. Mm-hmm. Then you almost you might have made negative progress if there's like well, a I mean, hill. You, yeah. you've used up a stroke and you're not any closer to getting through the hole, and maybe you're off the side weirdly. So basically, it's just like you keep shooting until you get it, but there's no like, oh, I'm gonna do a setup, or oh man, I'm gonna like. I mean, the only way you can screw it up is if you hit it too softly, right? No, if you hit it, so if you t- hit it too hard, it skips. I'll just like bounce off it and like fly three holes over and do a water feature. Mm, right. Yeah. And it depends what kind of loop it is. Like I've seen like like uh, like metal ones that like sit on the ground, and then it's not the whole cor- the whole course doesn't lead into it, so you uh, can just so miss like a little the lip. ramp. Oh, you, right, yeah, you yeah. can miss the on ramp. Yeah, that can be a problem. It is a problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm gonna take that problem, and make it giant. <laughs> so I found, like I did at the windmill, I found a, a mini golf loop that you can buy and put in your own course if you want, and it was two feet tall. So scaled up, that is 54 feet tall, which is almost the length of a bowling lane. So that's like the diameter of the loop. Now, I, I had to determine how hard, like how we were going to hit the giant ball, because obviously it's giant and you can't just hit it with a normal golf club. And in order to determine this, I decided that like the minimum you need to be able to do is to get it through this loop. So in order to get the... Our, the ball that's our size through a 54 foot loop it needs to be going 30 miles per hour at the top of the loop so you're probably going to need to hit a little more a little harder because it's going to slow down before it reaches the top but you need that amount of speed to counteract the force of gravity so how can we hit the ball that fast i mentioned earlier that the ball weighs about three quarters the weight of a car and if you look at conservation of momentum if you have two things that are equal in mass and one hits the other at a certain speed that thing's going to stop and the other thing's going to go that at that same and, speed and, and one of those things the people inside of it are going to die exactly <laughs> if i see where you're leading <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that's that was my first thought you can use this car but then you'll die <laughs> <laughs> that's not a good option so i was looking at safer options and i decided that i was looking at the crash from the wrong angle i should be looking at it from the thing that the car is crashing into and I started looking at crash tests. So they use, in crash tests, they use these things called sleds. And sometimes they just put the car on top of the sled and they like move the car that way. But sometimes they like, they propel the sled into a stationary car and crash the car that way. And I'm more interested in the 
propelled um, sleds. So some of them are motorized and some of them are rocket propelled. So they can actually get pretty fast. They use them to test like rockets and stuff sometimes. So they'll just have like a stationary rocket and they'll slam a, a rocket propelled sled into it. But we're probably just going to use the motorized one. And the thing is, these weigh about the same as a car. So I found a video of one and it the one that they used is 4,000 pounds, which is the, the weight of an average car. And the front of them is just like a flat thing that um, it's like designed to take impact. So it's like perfect for us. And it was in, in the video that I found, it was going 30 miles per hour. And it could probably go fast, like a little faster if we needed to. So that's pretty much exactly what we need. So I'm just going to find one of these, these crash sleds and it's going to be our club instead of our uh, golf, our normal golf club. And we'll be able to hit it through the loop and it'll be good. Can I throw one small wrench in this whole thing? Go ahead. So if you're scaling, if you're scaling everything up. Yes. Um, according to sandygogogolfgreens.com. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it's not go, go golf greens. It's Sandy Go Golf Greens. they because golf starts with go. I thought it was a go-go, which oh, was a much cooler yeah. name. Sandy go-go elf greens. <laughs> the SWG Mini Putt Pro Mini Golf Surface has a height of 0.4375 inches. So scaling that, scaling that up, now you have about a foot of grass mm. that, you're, <laughs> that you're trying to drive your thing through. You're scaling and I'm not an expert on cars, <laughs> but a foot of grass isn't super fun for most of them. I did not account the grass being scaled up too does it work if you just put a lawnmower on the front of it <laughs> i mean you'd have, <laughs> to, cuts the grass as you'd you have go. to throw the grass behind you somehow as you go forward i don't know and then and then it lays a new set of it just drops turf it just drops turf behind it yeah yeah this is this is the efficiency system <laughs> sure <laughs> <laughs> sure <laughs> Perfect. We'll do that. That was a clip from Absurd Hypotheticals, the podcast where we answer dumb hypothetical questions. For the full episode, click on the link in the description.